Class George here, and let's begin making this memory game. Let's create a new project now. Uh, application name, let's call it memory game. Once again, your domain, whatever that may happen to be. And then of course, we're gonna put down here our project location. So phone and tablet, yes. We're gonna be targeting uh, SDK 17 in this case. Uh, that's a good coverage, 87.4% of devices. So I'm fine with that. Let's go ahead and hit next. As usual, we're gonna start with an empty activity. So go ahead and do that. Our activity, the first activity we're creating, you can leave it as main if you want to. I'm just gonna call it menu activity, hit finish. So here we are with our menu activity right here. And as I mentioned before, we're gonna end up with two different activities. The first activity is simply going to have a text view uh, and a linear layout that's going to be vertically oriented. So menu, activity menu. Here we have a relative layout. So let's change that over to a linear layout. Linear layout, enter, save. This is all good. The padding's fine as well. We can leave all those characteristics. One thing we are gonna to wanna to do though, is if we come over here and check out the orientation for this, we're gonna make this one vertical. We still got that text view under it. Now let's have the, uh, the gravity for the linear layout actually be in the center so that all of the different widgets we place within this linear layout float towards the center region. Next up, we can click on text view. We're going to add a button. So let's go ahead and grab that button, drag it down here as a child. The text view object we have up here, let's change its name. We're going to want to create a new string resource for that. So let's click over here and new resource, new string value, resource name. Let's call this title underscore memory. Resource value is just going to be memory game. This is all fine, hit okay. Here we are, it's sourcing that string right there. And of course, if you're still not uh, sure about this, you can always go down to your res file value strings.xml and you can see that Android Studio has created that for you right there. Coming back in here now, new button. We need a different string for that. Let's go ahead and create a new resource again, new string value. Resource name in this case is going to be menu option uh, four by four game. Uh, resource value is simply going to be four by four game for me. Hit OK. And there you can see it's saying that there. Go over to strings and there it is right there. Uh, I'm using a naming convention that I find uh, good for when I'm searching for things. I typically forget the names of things very often or the variable names and so forth. So by putting descriptors at the front, I'll have all of my different menu options together in one lump sum as well as if for some reason I have multiple games, all my titles in one area as well. So let's take a minute to talk about something that I find pretty interesting and something a lot of folks get confused very, very often and very, very soon inside of Android programming. And that's the difference between these layout parameters and specifically layout margin, as well as the, the actual parameter that has to do with this button. And that button is going to be the padding value right here. So margin and padding, they sound very similar, but they do very different things. Let's go into Photoshop really quick to explain it a little bit better. Actually, you know what, we don't need Photoshop, we can do it right here. You'll notice that these properties up here actually have a layout qualifier at the front, and then they say width, height, gravity, margin, and weight. These are values that the layout, that is the linear layout above it, is going to use to determine how to uh, position this particular widget. So these are hints from this widget, from this text widget, to the linear layout about how to position things. And these different properties will change based upon the kind of container this widget is within. That is, there is a view group uh, layout, uh, layout type, there's a grid layout type, and so forth. And they all do have different parameters, such as the grid one we'll see has a row and column feature that we can work with. But what's important about looking at this is margin is going to affect the layout of the parent. And that means we're going to get a buffer around this object and that buffer is going to be external to the actual text view widget. It's going to instead be uh, added to the layout. That is the layout is going to put a buffer around that text view object. The text view object will not be any larger. It'll simply have a buffer around the outer portions of it. So for instance, if we come down here to the text view option right here and we go to margin, we can do all left, top, right, or bottom. Now, we're not gonna get heavy into this right now, but it's a big no-no in Android because of how fractured the landscape is for different devices. Because you know devices have all different kinds of sizes and different kinds of pixels. And a lot of people would, would come in here and, and think, okay, how many pixels over or up would I want to place an object? 
we actually deal with device independent pixels, which has to do with uh, taking into consideration the, um, the density of the pixels on your screen and coming up with a value that's device independent, hence the name. And like I said, we'll get more into this later on with a much more uh, interesting conversation, but that's, that's for the future. Let's not get concerned with that at the moment. So if we use all, and why do something like 20? Now by default, it's gonna put 20 DP. We could use different units and notations here, but we're just gonna go with that. But what you'll notice is that 20 device independent pixels or units here have been used to offset that text view away from everything else. There is now a, a margin around this object that no one else can get closer to. Now, the margin is one thing. If we go down here to the padding section, what we can do is we can add a padding to everything as well. And if we do maybe 10 DP on this, you'll notice the widget itself, the bounding box around it here has increased in size. And you don't have to do this to all the elements. For instance, let's say we did want to give it a little bit of padding like that. So what we can do here is instead of having a margin around the entire thing, maybe we just want to separate these two buttons. Maybe we just want to separate the title from the button a bit more. So what if we did something like 50 DP? And here you can see they're pushing each other apart. And that, and that would be a great way for us to help position our objects. And there's many, many other ways of positioning objects. This isn't the only way, uh, but this is one I, I encourage you to play with and get a sense of, of how uh, margin and uh, padding differ. Same thing down here, and this is going to be a little bit more visible. If the margin on this thing, if we hit all, and I did 10, you'll notice the, this, the text view bumped up another 10 units. Now if we come down here to padding, let's do something kind of large. Let's do, I don't know, uh, 20. 20 is pretty big. You can see it's increased its size, 50. And now the button is enormous. We're going to set that back down and actually get rid of the entire value there. All right, so that's setting this part up. Now we do need to go and check those IDs because we're gonna be using them in code shortly. So let's come on over into the XML and see what our IDs are. And as usual, the IDs aren't terribly good. Uh, for the button, it's already added one, but it's button and we probably want it to be more descriptive. So let's just say button underscore four by four underscore game. So before we dive into the code side of this, why don't we go ahead and create our second activity? We're gonna be requesting that the Android uh, Activity Manager generates that activity, and we need that activity to actually exist to prevent errors. So let's come on over here, right click, new, and let's do activity. Once again, do an empty activity. The uh, wizard will take you through it step by step. Let's call this one uh, game four by four activity. That's all good. So here's the layout. The idea is we're gonna be using a grid layout. So if you click on grid layout, so here's relative layout right there, and I accidentally added that there. Let's delete that. Let's go to grid, a relative layout, and do a grid layout instead. Save that, come back in here real quick. So you'll notice it's got some question marks here. So a grid layout can either be told explicitly how many rows and columns it has. We're gonna have a series of buttons on the screen and you're gonna press that button and that button is going to invoke uh, our game code that's going to check and flip it over and, and see whether or not a match has been made. You could make 16 different buttons by taking this button object, you know, control, right click, copy, right click, paste if we wanted to a bunch of times over and over and over and over and over again. And every time I hit control V here, you'll notice that I get this little uh, underline that tells me where I'm placing that object and I'm placing it below that one. And we could go through and do all of that. And that's actually the original way I was planning on making this because it's easy and simple for you to understand. But then I decided to do things a little bit differently. So um, don't do that. What we are gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna grab this grid layout at runtime. And we're gonna do that. But first I do wanna specify that this is gonna be a four by four uh, layout in this case. So we have four columns and four rows. So now within menu activity, what we're gonna to wanna to do is grab that button after we've inflated the menu. After we've inflated our layout, which is this line right here, we're gonna to wanna to grab that button. So let's do, go ahead and do a button. Um, four by four, actually, we're gonna to wanna to prop, we might wanna store that away. So let's do a private button, button four by four. Hit Alt Enter to add that import statement in. And let's find that view. So we'll do button four by four is equal to find view by ID, r dot id dot button four by four game. Semicolon, there we are. Typecast this over to type button. 
Now we're going to create an anonymous class that is going to implement the on click listener for this. So let's do button four by four dot set on click listener. Let's do new on click listener, hit enter, let Android Studio do all of the work for you in this case. And now in on click, what we're going to want to do is start this other activity we've created. And this is incredibly easy. There's two different methods and we're only going to look at one today and that is start activity. Now an activity takes an intent and an intent is exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's a request from us that's going to contain information such as about our application or what we want to be doing. Uh, it could also contain information about data to send across from one activity to another. It's really the request we're making. So we need to create a new intent for this. And that's as simple as doing intent, intent is equal to a new intent. I'm going to hit uh, control P. Let's do alt enter first, get that uh, included in. I want to hit uh, control P. So here's the list of different things we can pass in. So there's five different constructors for this. And the one we're after today is the content package context and then the class question mark um, class field. The idea behind this is we're going to pass it a context. The context is the activity class is a subchild of the context um, class and the app compat activity class is a child of the activity class. So obviously we're, we're then a, a child of the context. So we'll pass in this. So we need to tell the activity manager uh, what activity we want to launch. And we do that by specifying the class. And the class is going to be our new one that we just made, which is game four by four activity dot class. Oh, one little thing. Remember, we're not in this. This is actually the instance of view on click listener, the anonymous class we're instantiating. We actually want this one up here, our menu activity dot this. Common mistake, even I make it sometimes. Now that that's done, we're basically telling the activity manager, hey, please, sir, I would like to, here's my intent. This is what I want to do. I would like to create an instance of the game four by four activity class. Let's go ahead and see where we actually are with all of this. So let's go ahead and let's see, here's my phone screen connection failed. Uh, this is probably gonna fail in a second. So let's go ahead and hit okay. All right, so here we are with our new memory game and we can see our, our main menu activity. We can click on this button here and we can see we move over to our blank game four by four activity. So let's give this thing some life now and uh, make it a little bit more interesting. So in the next video, what we're going to do is create our own extension to the button class and that we're going to call it a memory button. It's going to hold information about our rows, columns, drawable IDs and so forth, as well as whether or not things have been flipped or not flipped. All right. Thanks everyone. See you next time. Bye.